Good morning and uh, welcome to my garden, a little corner of my garden. Happy Easter to, uh, to everyone. What a thoughtful sort of Easter we're having. <laughs> bring you to the corner of my garden today because it's been on my mind oh hang on that's not very level is it I haven't done that very well no that's no good that's no good <laughs> I've found a particular spot that isn't very stable no, that's no good. Right, let's get a little piece of something. Shove it under there. What have I got? Right, let's put a little stonelet under there. And that should do. Yeah, that's more like it. Right, okay. Easter morning. And uh, we've had an Easter egg treasure hunt this morning oh god it was hilarious so mrs mallet was up with a lark hiding easter eggs for us to find the little uh chicks that you see here and the daffodils this is a painting that talks about the we need a bit of hope right now don't we and um, I've been feeling inspired to talk about because there's no point in being despondent. You're better off being hopeful. Right. This springtime, this spring weather, unbelievable. Unbelievable. None of us can remember a spring quite like this where the sun has shone and everything feels and looks so glorious in this weather. Right. I'm going to put this to one side for the moment. No, first of all, I'll do me highs and hellos. Let's have a little hello and good morning and a happy Easter to folks. To uh, Cousin Katie, yay! And to Eileen in, uh, in the Lake District. To um, Susan and Lauren, happy Easter. Happy Easter, Kelly. Happy Easter, James. Uh, pin your comments on here and I'll give you a little message and a happy Easter. Because it is a good Easter. Right, this is what I'm going to paint on today. The loveliness of this little bluebell corner. Little lumps of rock and three colours of bluebells. The main lot are the beautiful blue and then I've got pink and white bluebells. White bluebells? Pink bluebells? Yeah, I inherited these in my garden. And I'm doing a, a, a portrait aspect here to uh, accentuate the height of the bluebells in this corner here. And I'm going to start straight away with where the bluebells are going to go. So I'm going to put the bluebells in right at the very beginning. That's the very first thing I'm going to do. And I'm using azure blue some violet and a little bit of um, ultramarine blue. I'm painting in acrylics. And the bluebells will fit right across the whole of this corner here. And I'll block them in where I think they're going to go and how I want them to be. A little easier to see when the sun goes behind that little bit of pale. 
in the so we woke up this morning and there was a lovely lovely little Easter contemplation from my good friend David the Bishop um, talking about Easter and why it was full of hope because you go how can it be full of hope when we're all so anxious and worried about when's this going to be over how's life going to be when when and if we ever go back to normal will there be a normal again will there ever be a normal there'll be a different sort of normal but right now we're noticing a, a well, I was going to say a kindness. Yeah, there's a kindness, isn't there? People volunteering, coming forward and saying, hey, I want to help. I want to help people. I want to do something for the NHS, for the nurses, for all those who are taking care of us. And that's really rather nice. And does that end when this ends? Well, we hope not. Well, one of the things that's very obvious is that life won't be the same. It, it, it can't be the same. Because we've already discovered that yeah, there is a magic money tree, actually. There is one. And all that business of no, there isn't a magic money tree. Yeah, there is. And uh, we can put that money to the things that are important like the NHS we just we just do we go yep we'll put money into things like that oh okay so if you can do that what else can we fix what else is important I don't know if anybody else has noticed this but on my bit of exercise when you go out and you take your little jog or you walk or you cycle whatever it is that you do for your little bit of exercise, you notice all the other people doing doing the same. And you notice how the streets are uh, busy with walkers. People walking. Uh, people appreciating the arrival of spring. The roads are so much nicer when they've just got cyclists on. And so this idea that we'll wait till 2040 before we all go into electric cars, well, that's nonsense, surely. Surely we'll be into electric cars and there'll be electric all over the place in the next five years. <laughs> because you can do, you can put your mind to it. If things are important, we go, yep, I'll do that, I'll fix that. Because we do, we just go, yeah, I'll fix that. I'll make, I'll make that happen. So perhaps that business of, um, of doing the thing we want to do will be accentuated. And we'll do more of it. Well, I hope so. Let's um, block that bit of tarlow green. Let's pull the end of that paint off. And our streets will become more pleasant, we'll have more walkways, we'll have more cycleways to enjoy the great outdoors because if there's one thing we've absolutely noticed is that we really rather like the great outdoors. We like it. We like it more than we th because we don't have anything else we can do. So we'll do that, thanks. Well, that's part of the hope of Easter, isn't it? So, my good friend David, who happens to be a retired bishop, talked about uh, the thing that defines us. Are we defined by uh, our vulnerability to disease? No, we're not. No, we're not defined by that. 
are we defined by the fact that we are part of life's rich tapestry that says, yep, yeah, life and death, sickness and health, they're part of what makes us human. Yeah. And who does the virus affect at? That piece from Emily May. When she started Newsnight the other night, you know, it isn't even in its attack. It's attacking those who are helping us in the NHS. But the thing that defines us is not our vulnerability, our possibility of suffering disease and stuff, but of how we live and love. Okay, enlarge on that a bit. Well, my brother Martin with Down syndrome, not defined by the accident of birth that, that gave him that condition, but by what he was able to do with those, with his abilities, reach his potential. Go on, what do you mean? Appreciate. <laughs> And changing of the seasons. Why are we in changing of the seasons? Yeah. This year, in this lockdown, we are noticing far more of the spring than we ever normally would. Okay? It hasn't rained significantly for a month. And... Um, that's weird because we always talk about April showers. This is a, a month where we should be, I should be dashing in and out of the, out of the garden because, ah, oh, caught by the rain. But I know I'm not going to get caught by the rain today. All oh, right. This is a different, different month. Yeah, it is. Um... Can you see all right there? Can you see what I'm doing? I hope so. Just getting some of the uh, greenery into this. The, the colours. You'll see it emerge in a minute. Right, so we're defined uh, by the way we react with people. Things that... The pleasant word. The niceness. And, you know, with... What is it, 100,000 deaths around the world so far? Yikes. Uh, you know, those calls that you make to people who you care about are actually quite important. And, God forbid, one of your loved ones uh, succumbs to this or to anything else. God forbid it. You can still carry them in your heart. I like that. I like that essence of uh, immortality. I guess that's part of the Easter message, isn't it? Uh, you know, by carrying your loved ones in your heart, and they weigh nothing at all, it's a nice way of saying, yeah, hang on, there's more to us than sickness and health there's a lot more so make a difference I, I, we're seeing it in people doing all sorts of things for their communities I'm liking that now what I'm doing here is I'm sort of going around the they'll come back into stronger forms in a minute but I do know that behind here there's a, a strong bit of dark green and you need that strong bit of dark green behind the 
because it's going to make the bluebells stand out. That dark green is my favourite. That dark green is ferns. Yay! Ferns which have been around. I was going to say since Adam was a boy, but actually it's earlier than that. They've been around since the dinosaurs. Since before there was grass. So before we were mowing the lawn, we had ferns. And long after this species has disappeared, ferns will still be growing on the planet. Great. Our job is merely to appreciate them. Paint them if you can. Appreciate them if you can't. So that Easter message of hope that comes in form of, I'll have an Easter egg hunt. We'll go and run around the garden looking for Easter eggs, shouting and yelling. Or maybe they're in your house. Wherever you have in your hunt. Good thing. Right, where's that white gone? I've got it somewhere. I put it, oh, where have I put it? Have the white to hand mallet. There it is. So you can see behind here there's the white wall. So I'm going to put that white wall into here. Now in your image there you can see along the top that there's a there's a wall. What I'll hint at, I think is I'll hint at the top of the wall by putting in a shadow. It's not very steady this, is it? You can see it wobbling around like crazy. I think there was something heavy on the back there. What have I got that's heavy? Oh, I'll put a tube of paint. That might, that might make it a bit easier and a bit more... Oh, that's a lot easier. Why didn't I think of that before? Why didn't you shout out and give me that? <laughs> Oilseed rape pungent at the moment. Beautiful pungent aroma. Uh, uh, the aroma of the arrival of spring. This particular week in April. Suddenly, there it is. You know, Saturday I noticed how... We had the uh, cherry blossom in bloom. Part of my ride yesterday, just up to the village, I came across a, a double cherry I've not seen before. Okay, two trees growing immediately together. One, a pink cherry, a double pink, um, the double cherry, and the other, white but the colors were mixed in together it was extraordinary uh, I, I got off the bike and took some photos i thought wow look at that that's amazing uh, okay so that's going to be a painting i know I'm not sure when just is Right, sense of wall, you can see a couple of things growing up it, which I haven't got in yet, and I think I ought to, can you see the, uh, the ivy, just, I'll just move this a moment, I won't move that because that will bugger things up, I'll move this, okay, there, you see, um, That, that gives you a little uh, a little hint of it, doesn't it? The, the bluebells. Right, okay. Good morning. Who's, um, who's uh, joining in with us this morning out in my garden? Uh, 
<laughs> Some silly poems coming in. I like those. So maybe people are watching the arrival of the birds and perhaps if you're lucky you may even have some birds nesting in your garden that's nice a lovely bird hutch painted for me in bright vibrant colors by young Elliot last year and uh, Elliot sent me a, a message saying, how's your, your bird hutch going? Is it, has it got any birds in it? Well, it hasn't yet, but I've seen a few, few bird, uh, blue tits, I think they're called, fluttering around, having a little look, inspecting. And what they do, I'm told by somebody in the know, is they do this. They have a little look at possible places and check on what there is uh, by way of escape route or branches for the little chicks that they'll practice on. I, I like this. It's all about prep, isn't it? It's all about preparing. And the little birds choosing their nest will ch We all do this. A little bit of prep going on. Now then, I've got just in the corner Here, some more of this dark greenery. This is going to work. Right. Okay. I'm mixing uh, tarlow green. Take a little little look now. See how we're going. Okay. Right, I'll take the sap green, I'm going to mix it with some cadmium yellow, which is going to give me my nice vibrant lighter green. So I was talking about uh, the thing that defines us, the thing that defines us is not Uh, it's not our proneness to disease or anything like that. It's about what makes us appreciate things. The simple word is, uh, is love. And the great thing with love is, of course, you, uh, is it, it lasts beyond death. <laughs> nice thought. That's a brilliant brilliant thought you carry your loved ones in your heart forever fantastic i talked a little bit about this a bit i was thinking about this when i um cycling across europe on the camino de santiago um, inspired by down syndrome brother martin about this time of year new growth coming in you know the greenery of of spring right there's there's the hint of the ferns and now I need this tarlow green it, it's like a oh uh, right that's gone on my feet <laughs> it wasn't supposed to do that sorry <laughs> right uh, white. I've kept the white here because I'm using quite a lot of it. Okay. The yellow mixed in with that green. Now that is very, very bright. So I, I, I knock it down a bit with some white. And it's still very bright. So I'm going to use a little bit of the antique brown in there which is like a, a yellow ochre uh, and that just makes a hint of grayness to it we'll actually put a bit of wedgwood blue in there right okay 
you see what happens I've got a, I've got a gray green into this now okay gray green good that's what I want this gray green is going to be the fronds of my bluebell plants bluebells bluebells uh, oil and of course they they come out before the green canopy this is why you see a bluebell wood you don't see it once the bluebell wood the, the, the canopy has grown because that takes over everything so you get the but I will have a further look for that I've been noticing other things like as I say the the pungent smell of uh, oil seed which I really like people don't but I do I think it's a particularly lovely smell um, and the bluebells there's a near where I live which is known as Shakespeare's wood and apparently the bard used to visit a girlfriend on his way to Stratford and it's said that that's where he wrote his famous Elanian shall I compare thee to a summer's day thou art more lovely and more temperate rough winds do shake the darling buds of man lease hath all too short a stay wow there you go that's a nice everything has its season to everything its own season all we have to do is to notice it and in my case, this year, paint it. I am deciding I'm going to paint the arrival of spring 2020. The spring that all of us will remember all our lives. Maybe you'll remember this and you'll talk about, oh yeah, that bloke painted the arrival of spring. Yeah, well... I think that's the thing that defines us, enjoying the seasons, enjoying what's there, have in the different shades of green around here and almost, not quite, the left is there. Let me get a bit of... Um, ready now ah that might work the raw sienna let's put a bit of that raw sienna because I've got some moss in here I've got a, a, a lot of lovely moss on these rocks that's because this is a particularly damp part of the garden I think in the olden days before I think there was a pond around here I think whoever lived here had uh, planted a pond, planted, you know, dug a pond. And those rocks, I think, before we moved here, somebody got rid of that pond. They didn't like it. They said, nah, it's not for us. But the rocks are still there. And they are now planted around with bluebells. And there's a lot of moss. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, the moss is there. And it's gone quiet. I can hear bees buzzing. 
I can hear some birds tweeting. Can't hear any traffic. Isn't that great? Can't hear the traffic. That's surprising for all of us, isn't it? Where is it? Oh, there isn't any. Good. Not missing the traffic sound, are you? Enjoying the sound of spring arriving. And all we have to do today is to be at home. I did hear that though. That sounded like gunshots. Ooh, uh, maybe that's the farmer. Got one of those gunshot things going. Now I'm going to have a little pause here. We'll have a little look. I'll bring the camera closer. You can tell me. No, that's not working, is it? I'll, I'll put it back and I'll leave the camera in position, otherwise you'll get a headache. And I'll bring this. Those are going to be my bluebells. And that's the ivy growing up the wall. You can just see the top of the wall. Okay? That's what I'm looking at. Now, let's get wadges of colour in place. Oh, yuck. Don't wipe paint on your nice shorts. Why are you wearing nice shorts? Well, because it's Easter. I thought I'd put on a nice T-shirt. Nice shorts. You know, I've got nice clothes. I want to wear them. Yeah, but you're out painting. Yeah, so. But just don't tell them. They don't need to know. Okay, so I've got a bit of paint on them. Does it matter? Azure blue. I love this colour. Azure blue. Okay. I don't put out very much of this onto my palette because it dries so quickly. But I'm mixing it with a bit of purple and then quite a lot of white. The difficulty with painting bluebells is not what you know. They are little dollops of blue and purple. A delicate fragrance of vanilla. You didn't know that bluebells had a fragrance. Well, they do. And it's absolutely joyous. And they all face down. There's something uh, about English bluebells and Spanish bluebells. And which are they and which are better for us? Well, half the world's variety of bluebell are native to the British Isles. We have the best climate on the planet. Really? But it rains all the time in Britain. Well, it hasn't rained much in the last month, has it? In fact, unless you're in Northern Ireland or western regions of Wales or some parts of Scotland, you haven't seen any rain at all in the last month. Large parts of the country are very, very dry. As I say, we should be dashing indoors right now and going, April showers have arrived. But they haven't. I'm told that's tomorrow. 
Okay, so I'm mixing some of the colour on my palette and some of it direct onto the board. Oh, I'm liking this. It's thick, gloopy paint. We all like gloopy paint on a picture. It shows the artist has been working hard. Now, I have really unusually three colour bluebells in my garden. I've not seen these uh, elsewhere, but I'm told they're not uncommon to have white and pink bluebells. I'm told it's quite a common sight. Really? Anybody else got white and pink bluebells, or am I the only one? Maybe we're in a special club. The white and pink bluebell club. Putting in quite a lot of white over here. The difficulty will be in this pink. Right, the pink comes from crimson. Crimson, but it, it's a much more delicate shorts, they're nice shorts. Um, mix plenty of white in there. Crimson. That's it. Oh, that's good. Now, because I'm painting outdoors, the paint dries very quickly. Acrylics are very quick drying. You just keep building it up and building it up and adding more colour. I'm using a very small brush here. That's because the size of the board is only A3. Okay, what would you normally be doing on Easter Day? Seeing your family? We've been commenting actually how meal times are different now. Meal times are different because we seem to have been doing a lot more talking to each other and even, even occasionally listening. So, you sit down for a meal, and gone are the days of just eating and watching the telly. We seem to be actually <laughs> listening. I'm not sure anybody's saying anything <laughs> worth listening to, but we're still doing it. Ah, right. Violet. Violet mixed with uh, titanium white, thick bits of violet, and then they go over the top of the other colours. I think I'm going to need some more of that dark green in here. I can feel it. I haven't put any stalks in yet, you'll notice. There's no stalks of, of bluebell into this. What will happen um, after this is that the painting will sit 
in my studio for uh, some days while I look at it and absorb it. And then I know what will happen. I'll pick up the brush and I'll start doing more work to it. I'll find things that are really obvious that need to be done. And I'll do some more work to them. And that's okay. Nothing's finished until it's finished. I'll have, as I say, up to half a dozen, maybe more, paintings on the go at any one time. Actually, at the moment, I think there's about a dozen or so paintings that uh, I've got on the go, mainly because those are the ones I've started since this lockdown. Have we been going to... No, it's more than that, isn't it? It's more than that. So there's probably uh, up to 15 or 20 paintings. And that's okay. Some of them are are more ready to accept the mallet signature and say, that's it, than others. Now, here's the key thing that I haven't put in yet. Some bits of highlight. Let's get a bit of this in. There's a, a hint of that pink bluebell down here which has just picked out the light so I'm making sure I've got that in Ah, there it is. There's that Tarlow turquoise. So on that Easter morning, all those years ago, those women, that group of women, went along to the empty tomb. found the whole place deserted and in chaos and then she comes across a figure thinks it's the gardener love this she says oi Billy the gardener where is he and he just says Mary she recognizes him by the sound of his voice People's voices, very distinctive, aren't they? Yeah, this is working here, look. Make sure you've got plenty of darkness into their mallet. Put a dark shadow behind the bluebells. And then you can have some dollops of light. that just illuminate things. Okay. Where's that light going to go? How am I going to get that in? How do you make sure that the light jumps forward? Mix a bit of sap green. Get that lemon yellow in again. Just lemon yellow, sap green and white. And then have some highlights. And that will give us the contrast because at the moment these are just dollops of blue there's not quite enough contrast yet
weirdly, I've set myself quite a target here to paint this little corner of my garden because there's nothing specifically obvious in terms of a tree or shapes. There's just this essence of colour colour in the form of bluebells, different coloured bluebells. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to put a little bit of light into those ferns in the background which should illuminate them and make them stand out quite nicely. Oh, what, where, where did that go? Let's try some of these stalks, see what happens. Uh, I, can, I need some more pink over here on this side, I can see. It's building up in terms of light and shade, but just not quite enough drama. So let's put some of those yellowy, pale whitey yellow flowers into here. See if that makes any difference. And over here, let's get that, that to work. They are difficult to paint this. It's a little bit like painting the wisteria, which is going to be out in about a week or two. Wisteria is next. And then the unfurling of these ferns. What I've got here that makes it quite easy is what's called fish fern. The fish fern it stays out. That's what you can see behind. Ah, right. So let's have a bit more of that bright red to accentuate the contrast of um, pink and white bluebells. Yeah, that's it. That's feeling better. That's more like it. Now I can f now I feel better there. I will do a bit more on this side over here. Now where's that purple gone? Here we go. Dark purple. Right, a little bit of, where's that nice violet gone? I'll put a bit of this into here. Uh, that's it, yeah. Now, if I put a little bit of that darkness in, it sh it's going to give it more shape and feeling to the... Uh... Sorry to butt in. Oh, hi, Billy. But you have a visitor. <laughs> This is Milo, everybody. <laughs> He's got his bunny ears on. Hey, Milo the bunny. What do you think of the picture? Oh, they've fallen off. <laughs> He's great. He's great. Thank you, Milo. <laughs> That's good. That's lovely. That is great. Anybody else got their dog dressed up for Easter? Well, do that because he's lovely. Now, I'm feeling all right with this, but i tell you what we can do. Let me just have a little look here. Okay, some colour here. Bit of that, bit of that. Okay, let me do some more work on that distant stuff behind. They could do with a little bit more work on the wall. That's 
that's it and then that grey let's use that grey so let's be bold with it Now those shadows I've got in here are shadows of the overhanging trees that we don't need to put into the picture. I just know they're there. Okay, now I want to make sure that my uh, ivy is growing properly. There's two tones to that ivy. I'm not sure you can see this. But there's a lightness in the back background to that ivy, so I can put a little bit of yeah, that a little bit of yellow into here. Okay. Going to stand up and have a little look now. Hang on. Okay. I think there's an interesting thing here and that is the colour of those blue bowls. I think I need to do a bit more work on that. Get in there. Uh, I was going to look at some of your comments actually. Let's have a look at your comments and see what's coming in. Where are they? Can I read them? The lights on the on the screen, if you don't mind. It's rather hard to read that. No, can't read it at the moment. Sorry, I'll read them later. But you're welcome to add your comments. Anything that you're finding that's happening with this painting. This is quite a good example. This particular painting of why I often say. Painting is not necessarily therapeutic. It might be to watch, but to do. I gotta concentrate here all the time. Concentrate on am I getting the effect I want to get? Is this working? All the time I'm asking myself that. Sharpening my eyes to have a look. about that'll do. I want it to be right. I'm asking quite big questions of myself to get this to be how I want it to be. And that requires an effort. Look, in all our jobs, everything we do there are bits that are easy because we've done them loads of times and we know how to do them. And there are bits that require a bit more concentration and a bit more discussion. Well, it's the same, I think, with painting. Am I getting it? And all you're doing, I suppose, at this stage is seeing my struggle here to see if I'm going to get it, if I'm going to get it right.
But the, the joy for your eyes here is that you can see you can see it better than I can in some ways because you're just slightly further away. Not physically. Physically, you're squillions of miles away. But I mean visually, because you're looking over my shoulder. And the colour you see We've been going about an hour. And we've certainly got some of the colour of this. I'm sticking the brush directly into the tube of paint. Okay, now, let's call the family over, see if they've got any comments. Hang on. Hey, Mrs. Mallet. Well, it's a sunny day, a glorious day, and my family are all indoors, so I've had to drag <laughs> them out. Take a look at this then, uh, what do you think? Very good. It's good. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> what is it? <laughs> flowers of some sort. Some sort of flowers, Billy. Are they foxgloves? No, tell me why we have hot. different coloured uh, bluebells. We've got white and pink bluebells here. Very nice, aren't they? Do we have some garlic as well? Wild garlic. Wild garlic coming through there too, but not on this particular set of rocks. Um, I don't know. Nice picture. Yeah? Yeah, I like it. Then you need like an aeroplane crashing in the distance and a ball of flames. Ball of flames. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Make it more interesting. <laughs> very good. Thank you very much. For those words from the art critic young master mallet there. So, here you go. Here's your look. So, we start at the top with the wall in shadow come down through the ivy then we've got the blue bells and the pink bells and the white bells and those have been painted onto this canvas in the last hour so at this stage I think it's time to stop and say thank you very much for watching um, your comments I will have a good look at and if you want to see more of my paintings, malletspalette.co.uk is the place to go for mallet art. And if you want to know more about the cycle ride and the paintings I've produced cycling and painting the Camino de Santiago, then Utterly Brilliant My Life's Journey is the book to get. And you can get that at any online retailer, your Amazon, SPCK, Waterstones, you know, any of the book retailers. If you'd like a personally dedicated copy, yep, doing them uh, from Timmy Towers. So you go to timmymallet.co.uk, where of course you can also get your pinky punky and you can go mallets, mallets, a word association game where you mustn't pause or hesitate. Repeat a word or say a word I don't like. Otherwise, you get a passion head like this or like this. And it's one with the most bruises who loses, look at each other and go, Bleh! So, tomorrow we're going to have a look at uh, painting the bright, pungent yellow of oilseed rape. That's the idea I'm going to have to try tomorrow. But in the meantime, have a Easter uh, with your family. And uh, hope all of you. Thanks for watching. Blah!